Um, I'm Claude Thierry, and I come from a place called... Hello. Moose Creek, Ontario. <laughs> and as you may imagine, there are moose there. And uh, beavers. I grew up, in fact, about a kilometer away from a beaver dam such as this. And I spent a fair amount of my youth uh, hiking and fishing and observing and interacting with the ecosystem around there. So much so that I think I, profound, I developed a profound love of nature. Fist sister are actually people who do love nature. Love in the sense that you strive to understand, forgetting yourself, probably one of the biggest parts of understanding, that you strive to commune with, and that you strive to respect. So in that sense, I can really say that I loved nature profoundly. And that love of nature took me a lot of places. Because if you give in to your passion, and you follow it, it'll take you everywhere. It took me right here to McGill, where, uh, with my supervisors at the time, David Hanna, who had a link with Mrs. Milner, his father came over as one of those physicists that she was talking about, and my other supervisor, Ken Reagan, well, we begged and we borrowed and we did a whole bunch of things. We started building telescopes like this. Now, this telescope lets you see in a new energy range that was never able to open to humanity before. When you build new tools, you open up new frontiers. Galileo's telescope opened up for astronomy. Microscopes opened up biology. Well, there's a new frontier today. And I'm very excited about it, because I think it's a frontier that almost everybody here can participate with. 2009 marks a very important year, history of humanity, if you want. It's the year where we generated more data between 2008 and the end of 2009 than had been generated in previous humanity. From the days of people writing stuff on petroglyphs, maybe to the Romans doing stuff on papyrus, through radio and TV, film, everything, not as much data as we generated in 2009. Wow. And right now, we're generating data as we speak. People are tweeting. Social media has really added to this. It's one of the big reasons why it's happening. This very minute, 98,000 tweets are going to be emitted. 320,000 new accounts. 168 million emails are being sent while I walk across this stage. That's social data, too. 6,000 photos on Twitter. Every minute, there's 48 hours of video that's uploaded to YouTube. Ah! <laughs> right? If your job is to deal with the data, you can't even put in hard drives, hard drives in, in a rack space in time to like, cope with this data. Right? But it doesn't end there. Because if I say... We we're trying to measure this rate of data increase. Well, roughly, you know, every 1.5 years, we're doubling the amount of data that we're generating. So that means if I say something today, here's a person, and there's a little piece of data, then in five years, I'll have a factor of 10 times more data. In 10 years, a factor of 100. And in 20 years from now, we're going to be generating 10,000 times more data than we are today. And that's if we don't have something called exhaust data, which is like your blood sugar levels being automatically measured and added to the internet. Ah! <laughs> if your job is to analyze this data, you might be panicking. <laughs> What's worse is that the data is not just expanding very quickly. The data is a lot like the sun when you take a close look at it. When you look at the sun from here, it's like a big ball of fire, hurts your eyes, but it's kind of uniform. But reality, this is what the sun really looks like. There's black spots. There's internal currents. There's helioseismology. Things are moving inside there. There's layers of every element you could possibly imagine, right down to the middle where it's pure iron. 
And then there's solar flares. Well, social media right now is doing that. That solar flare, that's the MySpace solar flare. <laughs> right? MySpace was everything four years ago. It's gone. Friendster, gone. So what do we do? Well, there's a large, huge, this is a new frontier. Zeitgeist in German means the kind of like ghost of our times, right? Geist for ghost. Very hard concept to measure. But the first time in humanity, we're actually able to start measuring zeitgeist, starting to measure the collective unconscious. How do we do this? Well, let's just say I'm thinking of something right now, and I'm thinking like, okay, I'm going deep down. What am I thinking of? Putin. <laughs> yes. Okay, so I could tell I love Putin. So if I admit that on Twitter or on something else, a lot of other people might be, if you start measuring more people, it seems kind of chaotic. If you measure even more people, let's say like everybody in this room, whoa, wait a minute, and I start looking at the connections between people, I maybe start seeing logic or start seeing patterns, right? Because I said Putin, you're probably thinking Putin now too. Right? <laughs> well, if I extend this to millions of people and I have very smart computer programs that can look at the interactions between people, the relationships between people, because that's what's more important than the individual, I can start seeing proto-ideas, memes, unconscious thought that a society may have. And that's what we're measuring. People are working on this right now. So, sadly, some of the people working on this are people like Facebook, where they only use the biggest social data set ever created by mankind that could be helped to improve social programs, that could be helped to improve everything. They're only doing it to sell you more ads. But there is a whole bunch of other data that's public, like Twitter, and a whole bunch of other ones. But we need special people right now to be able to understand that. People like me who, you know, are used to dealing with colossal astronomical data sets. I used to take 100 gigabytes of data every 28 minutes. In the time where we repoint that telescope, we had to analyze that data. <laughs> so there are very few people around who have that kind of, you know, large data set knowledge. But worse than that, you also need people who understand humanities. So how many people in the audience here have studied like hard science? I'd say five to 10%. How many people here in the humanities and arts? The rest, okay? All of you have a role to play. You can all participate in this new frontier. Because what we actually need, I think, are anthropomath math people. There's a brand new field that's starting. It's very exciting. And we need all of you. Because soon, the inst instrument builders like me, who work with other kind of like people like that, like maybe scientists and computer scientists, we're giving all our knowledge, that's what science is supposed to do, to engineers and project managers. And they're building tools, tools that will open new frontiers. So that all of you will be able to take the data from the zeitgeist work with the right tools, and participate in discovery. That's it.